You. Finding life rather dull. Dreaming again of exotic places. Wishing you were somewhere else. We offer you escape. Escape with us now to England and the story of a hard rock miner trapped in a deserted mine beneath the icy waters off the Cornish coast as Hammond Innes tells it in his gripping tale, The Killer Mine. The rain had stopped when I reached Penzance just before dark. At the waterfront there were men dressed much the same as myself in seamen's jerseys and jacket. Nobody took any notice of me, and I suddenly felt at ease for the first time since I landed in England. I lit a cigarette and fished out of my pocket the worn and dirty bit of notepaper which bore Dave Tanner's address. Two Harbour Terrace, Penzance, Cornwall. I read the note again. Dear Jim, I hear things aren't what they were in Italy. If you're getting tired of it and want a change of air, I can fix you up with a job in England, no questions asked. It's a mining job and right up your street, your old chum, Dave. <laughs> well, up to now, I'd been lucky. No questions had been asked. So I went to meet my old chum at number two, Harbour Terrace. Mr. Tanner in? Who? Tanner, Mr. Dave Tanner. Oh, nobody of that name lives here. Oh, well, he's an old friend of mine. I've come a long way to see him. Uh, uh, look, here's the letter he sent me. Oh, I'm sorry. But look, you don't have to be afraid. I'm not a cop. He's a Welshman, dark hair and eyes, a bit of a limp. Oh, it's... Uh, maybe it's Mr. Jones you're wanting, but he's not here now either. Well, do you know when he'll be back? No, I... Uh... Hello. Uh, you're hurt. Oh, no, I... Well, that's blood on your hands. Oh, one of the lodgers. He cut himself on glass. Davy's here, isn't he? He's here and he's hurt. No. You can't come in. Move over. You... Where is he? I tell you, you're mistaken. What the devil are you doing, girl? Come and fix his arm before I lose any more blood. Who was it, anyway? It's all right, Dave. It's me, Jim Price. Jim Price? Fine time for visiting, you've chosen. Well, come on up, man. I'm bleeding to death. We went upstairs, and inside his room, Dave was sitting, white-faced, on the edge of a bed. He winced as the girl daubed iodine into what was obviously a bullet wound. And then the bandage went on. Hey, not too tight, girl. Well, what happened, Dave? Nothing. It's all right. I'll tell you later. I'm glad to see you, Bach. Still. Yes, Davy. Wrap up some food. Find another raincoat. But you can't go out. You... Don't argue, girl. It's time to go now. All right. That's better. Now we can talk. You've come over for that job, eh? Yes. Got a show with no questions asked? I managed. It cost me my last farthing, though. I've got no papers. <laughs> you got a show. That's what matters. Well, uh, Jim, it's a mining job, as I told you. <coughs> Here, help me on with my coat. Yes, well, uh, Easy. Easy. Though. Easy. There. Uh, I want to be shut of this place. Your way is the same as mine. I'll tell you about the job as we go. Where? Where do we go? Cripple Z's tin mine. But there's more to it than that. Oh? Come on. We'll meet the girl downstairs. I've got to get out. Come along. <coughs> His sandwiches and an old raincoat of father's. Give it to him. Now listen, Sam. Those yeah. clothes upstairs, burn them. Yeah. Clean up everything. Anybody comes round asking questions, tell him you haven't seen me. All right. Not for three days. Well, where can I get in touch with you? You can't. You'll come back? Indeed I will. But remember, you haven't seen me. And you don't know where I've gone. I don't know. That's true. You'll hear from me. Now open the door, see if anyone's about... The 
street was deserted, and the rain had started again as we slipped out. We kept to mean, badly lit streets as we made our way out of the town. Then, at the top of the hill, we left the lights of Penzance behind us. We hadn't said a word until then. We'll separate at Lunyon. How far is that? Oh, eight, nine miles. Oh. Oh. Where are you going? A farm. Be hiding up for a bit. Oh, the police, Davy? In a matter of speaking, I had a fishing boat. Isle of Mull. We were carrying goods. <laughs> Liquor? Of course. Yeah. Picked it up from an Italian boat. A revenue cutter bought us. They insisted on taking the hatches off. They warned them not to. It was their own fault. I jumped for the other boat. That's when I got this bullet through the arm. And how did you get away? We'd booby trapped the hatches. When they opened them, she went up, sank. Just like that. How many were killed? What does it matter? They're after me, though. What about me? Oh, the job. I told you, if you want it, it's yours. Where do I go? Who do I see? Cripple Z's. Just down the road from Butler. Ask for Captain Manick. Tell him I sent you. Show him my letter. That's all? That's all. Oh. He'll tell you what it's about. <laughs> Come on, I'll step out. I need to rest soon enough with this cursed arm. It must have been nearly midnight when the little Welshman and I parted. He pointed the way to Cripple's Ease a mile further along, and then turned away, disappeared in the driving rain. A half an hour later, I found the huddle of abandoned mine buildings. And then against a crackle of lightning, I saw a house. I had reached Cripple's Ease and the job that was waiting for me. What do you want? I want to see Captain Manick. I be Captain Manick. What do you want? Dave Tanner sent me. Who? Dave Tanner. He told me to show you this letter. Oh. Hmm. Come in. Right. My name's Jim Price. Davy said you had a mining job for me. I'm a miner. I was working in Italy. Come in here. It's a fire. You can get warm. How long have you known Dave? We were in the army together. Where? Italy, mostly. Casino. Mm. Sit down. You're the deserter chap, aren't you? Oh, it's all right. Uh, David told me about it. We don't ask questions here. Does anyone know you're in England? No, only Dave. Uh, this job you've got, how long will it take? Not being a miner, I wouldn't know. Might take a week. I'll give you a flat rate of 50 pounds. And another 100 if you can do it in two days. A big tin strike? No. Well, I don't see where... All right, uh, just a minute. Yeah. Now, uh, have a look at this chart. These mines are finished. There's nothing worth working in them anymore. I've got another use for it. You see that long gallery running down under the sea? Yeah. It's called the Mermaid. Nearly half a mile long. Now then, what I want you to do is to blow a hole in the seabed at the end of it. Blow a hole in the seabed? Yes. You see the slope of the gallery? It starts about 100 feet below the sea level. Mm -hmm. Then at the end, rises to, well, by my figures, uh, 20 feet under the bed of the sea. My job is to drill through that 20 feet and let the sea in, huh? Yes. I can tell you it's getting risky running liquor into England through the usual channels. I see. Yes. This will be safer. Our boat spots a buoy which marks the entrance of the underwater mine. Lowers the cargo and we haul it through the mine up to the shore. Well, how? A carriage drawn by a horse. Oh, oh it'll work. Even underwater it'll work. Oh. I've had two men working on the shaft for a year now we'll straighten it out. All we need is a miner to finish the job. That's you. It's nasty. It's 
Suppose the entrance gets jammed with rock after she blows. No, I'll go down in a day diving suit and clear it. Mm. It's nasty. I haven't done undersea stuff. But you know explosives and rock? Yeah. And there'll be nothing to it. I don't know. What about Davy? Was he doing a job for you? Suppose the police get him and tie you up with it. What happens to me? Huh? Oh, don't worry. I don't like it. A man, be sensible. You're a deserter from the British Army. You returned to England without papers. If not here, where would you work? I'd be offering you 150 pounds. I should have stayed in Italy. But you didn't? No, I wanted to see Cornwall again. It was a mistake. Not at all. Ah. Do what I ask and I'll see that you get a passage back to Italy. No. No, it's too dangerous. I'm sorry, I'll take my chances somewhere else on another job. Oh? And you leave me no alternative. What do you mean? I shall have to telephone the police in Penzance and inform them that the deserter has shown up. Looking for a job. After what you told me? Now make me laugh. I'm quite a respectable man in these parts. I doubt that the authorities would take your word against mine. You're bluffing. Nobody can force me to do anything. You think not? No, stay where you are, Mr. Price. I wouldn't hesitate to shoot you. You see, I'm in rather a desperate position. It's taken me a long time to find a miner to do this job. I couldn't bear to see you refuse. You still have a moment to change your mind. Hello? Would you ring the police station for me, please? He wasn't bluffing. I knew that I owned only a few seconds to decide. It was a choice of arrest, conviction as a deserter, or doing a job which might mean my life. I had run away from death once before. I suddenly realized that I'd been running ever since. I had to stop. I looked back at Manic, smiling and sure with his pistol pointed at me. Well? All right, hang up, hang up, I'll do it. I'll blow up your bloody mind. Escape, under the direction of Norman MacDonald, returns in just a moment. Boy Scout Week is now being celebrated across the nation. The scouting program is well known to almost every American. It includes character building, physical fitness, and citizenship training that enriches the lives of boys and young men in all walks of life. Get your son or your neighbor's boy to join this worthy organization. And now, back to Escape. Manick put down the phone, opened a desk drawer, and took out some pound notes, handed me ten, and suggested that I get some sleep. We were to start work at five in the morning. I was pocketing the money when the door behind us opened. I looked around and saw an elderly man had entered. I didn't know you'd anybody here, Henry. It's all right, Father. This is Jim Price. He's going to work here a bit. He's a miner. A miner, is he? Well, my boy, it is good to know there'll be a miner working here at last. Uh, I knew you'd see it my way sooner or later, Henry. At least we can make a start now. Price is working for me, Father. Working for you? Nonsense, he must work for me. I'll prove to the world that the Cornish mining industry isn't dead. You may as well understand. I'm letting the sea into the mermaid gallery. You're mad. You can't do it. I won't allow it. That's what I'm going to do. I won't allow it, I tell you. I won't. You've no alternative. Mr. Price, perhaps you'd better leave us now. Go to the kitchen across the hall. One of the men will show you to your quarters. All right. I went to the kitchen. could hear the argument raging through the hall. There were two men sitting by a fire with mugs in their hands. One like a diminutive monk with a pot belly and rosy cheeks, and the other a long, cadaverous-faced man who looked at me solemnly as I entered. Blow me another one. 
Sit down, chum, sit down. I say, are you staying or passing through? I'm going to work here. I'm a miner. Oh, love a duck. Is that slim? Now we don't have to worry about the ruddy roof falling in on us. My name's Fryer, Fryer O'Grady. You call me Fryer. And this here's Slim Matthews. Jim Price. That excited you to blow through the seabed? Yes. Does the old man know? Yes, I just left him. Thought I heard Oggy Boggy. It's going to be trouble. Well, I don't understand. The old man's been working these mines all his life. Now he says he's found the richest tin strike and call. Captain's right, though. Captain's right. Running liquor is tax-free, <laughs> if you follow me. Too expensive to operate in mine these days. I shouldn't want your job, Mr. Price. We've been sweating for a year down here. Funny feeling with all that sea over your head. Oh, well, every man to his trade, I say. Come on, mate, I'll show you to your digs. Imagine you'll want to be up right hand. Thanks. See you in the morning, Mr. Price. <laughs> The little cockney showed me to my room, and it was about a uh, half hour later that I heard a tap on my door. Yes? Mr. Manick. I was afraid you might be asleep. Look, I want to... I got something to show you. My son tells me you're an experienced tinner. Have a look at this rock. Maybe you'll believe me. Hey... That's tin, all right. This fabulous. The richest seam in the history of Cornish mining. Look at it. And my son, curse him, doesn't see it. He's going to let the sea into the mine. And he's brought you here to do it. You're the man who's going to wreck my life. I'm sorry. It is a job, that's all. You can't. You mustn't. I'd, I'd give you 50 pounds more than he's offered. If you don't do it... What difference would it make if you'd only get another miner? But that would take time. Don't you see? We would be rich. I'm afraid... It's, it's, that... it's all right, it's all right. Think about it. I know he holds something over your head. He does with everyone. Think about it and give me your answer tomorrow. All right. I will. Good night. <laughs> What's the pit for, Captain? Yeah, underneath the scaffolding there. To catch the rock when you make the final blast. Oh. Well, it might work. As I told you, if it doesn't, I'll come down in a diving suit to clear it away. You say there's 20 feet to get through? Yes. There's quite a bit of water seeping in now. It'll be touchy, all right. Granite basalt from the feel of it. Oh, that's what I thought. Well, and if it cracks... Anything might happen. Yes. Uh, by the way, my father spoke to you last night, didn't he? Yes. Showed you the tin. Probably offered you more not to blow the mine. I hope you refused, because if you didn't, I can still notify the police. I didn't tell him anything. Good. Then you can start to work immediately. I'll send Friar and Slim down to help you. Uh, and by the way, don't go wandering around too much. Some of these old tunnels run for miles that you can get lost. And stay out of the shaft that parallels this one. She's the old come lucky mine. There have been a lot of falls recently. If she caves in, she'll take in the sea and break through here. I'll be careful. I've worked mines most of my life. It gives you a funny feeling to be standing under the sea a half mile from shore and protected by 20 feet of rock. Rock that you're going to be drilling and blasting until there's only maybe 10 feet. Then you pray that it doesn't cave in until you're out of the way. Friar and Slim came down and I started to drill holes for the explosives. As the rock fell away, little streams of water fell, soaking us. It was nasty work, all right. Did you jump? That's enough for the first blow. How many do you think you'll need? Three, maybe four. Depends. 
Uh, give me the charges. Gotcha. Here you are, Price boy. Uh, oh, lots of water there. There's nothing to worry about yet. I hope. You and Slim better get up the tunnel when she goes. I was hoping you'd say that. I'm off. Good luck, chum. The two men disappeared up the gallery and I was left alone to explode the charge. I connected the wires, moved the exploder as far as it would stretch into the tunnel, and then I... I pressed the handle. Ah. The roof still held. A bit more water trickled in, but... She still held. I went back to the entrance for a cup of coffee before starting again. As I approached the cage, which served as an elevator to the surface, I saw Captain Manick talking with another man. It was Dave Tanner. Oh, bloody fool! Why of all places did you have to come here? I told you, the guard talked. I heard it on the wireless. I knew they wouldn't be thinking of looking for me here. It would be safer. Safer? In broad daylight? Somebody must have seen you. The police will be all over us. Nobody saw me. How do you know? Price, you've got to be through that seabed by tonight. Well, it's impossible. I can't do it. Nothing's impossible. I can get you out of the country as soon as you've finished the job. You don't finish tonight and the police come. Well, what do you know? What does that mean? Well, it can't be done. There's too much work for one man. I'll put Friar on the drill with you. He knows something about it. Tanner and myself will be clear of the rock after each blow. Well, I'll try. Good. You, Dave, stay out of sight, down here, and keep my father out of here. Shoot him if you have to, you understand? All right, all right! We worked like madmen all day, drilling, blasting. We blew the rock three, four, five times, and still it wasn't enough. The water was coming in fast, filling the pit. Manic and Slim went back for new drills and charges. Friar and I stayed on the scaffolding. And I don't like the looks of that. What's up, mate? Rock. Weaker up here. Dangerous? Maybe. Fetch me a pick. All right. Hey! Ain't that a do? Broken the end. The last charge must have done it. I'll often get another. Shot me a bow. I sat on that scaffolding, smoked a cigarette. Water streamed down the slimy walls. And I waited for Friar. Five minutes passed. And then... Mr. Price! Huh? Mr. Price! Huh? Mr. Manick! You've got to stop. You've got to. Mate in! If you flood the gallery, I'll never get it. I'm sorry. I won't let you, do you hear me? There's nothing I can do. It is mine. You're going to destroy it. I'll kill you. I'll kill you all. But you, you better go to the surface, Mr. Manick. is not safe here. Ah, you'll find out. You'll find out how unsafe it is. He was gone. And I knew he was up to something. I wanted to follow, but I remembered Captain Manick's warning about the tunnels. The old man knew them every twist and turn. And if he wanted to get rid of me, he could lead me to a maze from which I would never find my way out. So I stayed there until the captain and Slim came back. We're getting ready to go, Price. Your father was here. What? He's up to something. How did he get by day? I don't know. You let him go. Come on, hurry. We've got to stop him. What'll he do? He's going to make sure that we can't let the sea in here. He's mad. The come lucky. Ah, that's what I'm afraid of. He knows that mine like a book. Come on! The old man was somewhere in the mine which paralleled ours. If he knew of a fault in the wall, he could allow tons of seawater to rush in, breaking down the walls and flooding our tunnel. We had to stop him. Friar joined us as we made our way into the adjoining galleries. If he's got dynamite... Don't say it, Captain. I should have locked him up long ago. Uh, what's that down there? The uh, say. It looks like a light. It, it is. That's him. I, he's working on something. The wall. Father! Father! 
Stop it! Stay where you are! Stay there! Do as he said. Don't come any closer! Listen to me! Don't do it! You'll be killed! He'll drown us all! Let's get out! Say you let me have me tin! Let him have it! Let him! Uh, look! He's lighting a match! Say it! Say it, my son! No, you old devil! Kill yourself! Go on! You're not getting me killed! Captain! No! Come on, son! Come on! Captain Manick lay on the wet tunnel floor, blood streaming from a wound where Friar had struck him with a pick. We ran, the three of us, and behind was the mad old man and his charge of dynamite. We reached the mermaid gallery when it went off. We could hear the water pouring down as though from a great height. And then the more terrifying sound as the tons of sea swept through the maze of tunnels. We ran, ran for the elevator which could take us to safety. And the surface, a hundred feet above, and the water followed. You could, you could hear the roar until it deafened you. No, 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 wait, wait, give me a hand. I've twisted my ankle. Sorry, Tom, can't stop now. I could see that blessed elevator so close. Slim and Friar were almost there. Then the gate clanged, and it started up. No, 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 wait, 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 don't leave me. Use the ladder, use the ladder. Somehow, I reached the ladder, painfully started up the runs, it was a nightmare, and the water was the monster that you couldn't escape. Halfway up, I heard them in the cage. It's stuck! It won't go any further! Oh, pull, pull harder! I'm trying, but it won't... It won't... Ross! Ross, can you hear? Ross, are you on the ladder? Ross, we can't get in the eye up! We're getting down! I said, Ross! I kept climbing, and the voices faded faded until I heard a gurgling scream, and then silence, and the water stopped its terrible sound. It had found sea level. When I got to the surface, I saw Dave Tanner. He was standing, looking down at me with frightened eyes. And with him were three men in uniform. They were the police. I fell into their arms, crying. I tell you, I cried. I was so happy. I got away from that killer. That killer mine. Under the direction of Norman MacDonald, Escape has brought you The Killer Mind by Hammond Innes, especially adapted for Escape by Anthony Ellis. John Daner was starred as Jim. Featured in the cast were Eileen Erskine, Tony Barrett, Ray Lawrence, Wilms Herbert, Jay Novello, and Lou Krugman. The special music for Escape was composed and conducted by Del Castillo. Next week, escape with us to Mexico City and the story of a woman caught up in a terrifying web of murderous intrigue as Patrick Quentin tells it in his exciting story, The Follower. If you'll stick around, you'll find a lot of laughs and some deep human interest. Bill Goodwin is about to pay his regular Sunday afternoon visit with his Dollar a Minute program. Bill will be selling CBS airtime at this modest rate to more people with things on their mind. Dollar a Minute starring Bill Goodwin follows a mini um, on most of these same CBS stations. This is Roy Rowan speaking. This is CBS, the Columbia Broadcasting System.